What do you like the most about New Orleans besides the fact that we got engaged there? The food. What about our... Oh. <laughs> what about our Airbnb asset? Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> Troy Kearns, real estate investor, bringing it to you from my house with my beautiful wife, Eden. And in today's video, we're going to talk about how much money we have made on our Airbnb properties. And the reason my beautiful wife decided to join us today is because she is the one who makes it all happen with Airbnb. We're gonna cover about how you can become a great Airbnb host, profit margins that you can make, finding the right market, and how to deal with local municipalities that may be getting on you as an Airbnb host, how to make your guests happy, how to get repeat customers, enjoy lots of vacation time, and it's all free. You can write it all off. For the last five years, we've been doing Airbnbs and we've got multiple of them and they all make tons of money because of what she does. So our first Airbnb was in New Orleans, Louisiana. Very, very, very popular tourist attraction city. We identified the area because we liked going there. The market had not popped at that moment and we hunted down a few different properties, found one that we saw a lot of potential in. So we got it into contract and we closed it down, redesigned the entire house, right? This is probably our first collaborative effort yeah. on everything that we actually, we built this with the attitude of it's our second home first and an Airbnb second. Meaning that like, if we didn't make any money with it at all, I was okay with that. That's how I went into this investment. Eden went in knowing 100% it was gonna work. She designed the house exactly with that intention. And what I will mention is that we paid $110,000 for this house as the acquisition. And we put about $500,000 into the remodel, which basically means our builder scraped the whole house all the way down to the bottom and rebuilt a brand new house. Cause that's what my baby wants. And whatever so my baby wants, my well, baby gets. What he's saying is that um, I designed the house in mind. First and foremost is our second home, but secondarily as this business, I thought of it in terms of um, families. How many families can I get into this house comfortably? And um, you know, because the wave of travel, even five years ago, was shifting and has ultimately shifted completely where people want to travel friends and family and people don't want to go and get four hotel rooms. You all want to be in the same space. You want to share a kitchen. You want to cook meals. You want to hire a chef. You want to have a space to gather, watch, uh, you know, games. And that was what I had in mind was how many families can we comfortably get? And then with that, how many bathrooms do we need, et cetera. And so hired an architect and we designed the house and then we hired, um, we did hire a general contractor. We made a lot of the decisions, a lot of the design decisions. I mean, we really got in there and, you know, we were ultimately very proud of the end result, the product. Uh, it came out beautiful and then we started renting it. A few things that are really important if you're just getting into the Airbnb short-term rental. First thing is you gotta get yourself a, a profile on those websites right away, today, now. If you're planning on renting a room, renting an entire house, it doesn't matter. You wanna have a profile on there so that you can establish a length of time that you are on that. While we were building the house, I established our um, profile and I started posting renovation pictures and coming soon pictures. And I was so surprised that I got inquiries based on these, I mean, pictures of framing studs. There was, you know, the house had nothing and I got a request for Mardi Gras like seven months later. And so it spoke to that we were onto something with that property right. and that we're probably gonna be able to rent it for 
the major holidays and festivals because that was our initial thought process. The kind of rule of thumb with short-term rentals is you should be making about three times gross that would you normally would make on a traditional rental. So this property would traditionally rent for about $2,500 a month to $3,000 a month. So we should get between $7,500 a month to about $9,000 a month in gross income as a short-term rental because we're gonna have to furnish it, provide them all sorts of nice little treats. Maintain like, it. Maintain it, get it clean. So what we did is we went and looked at other Airbnbs and saw how much they are renting for. And then we did a calculation of like, hey, if it only rents for 10 nights a month, we break even, right? And we felt comfortable entering in the market, not knowing a lot of it, and with a very, very low expectation, like if we don't rent it at all and it's just our second home, are we okay with that? And yes, we were. So getting into that, I think our first year, we grossed $138,000. $138,000, and that's gross. That's not after paying for the mortgage, which was about 4,000 and change a month, and paying for the insurance, which was a little bit of money, and paying to maintain it. Let's just call it was $6,000. We made about $60,000 our first year. So the way that the Airbnb works is just like everything else. You gotta have an awesome rating, which means that you gotta get five-star reviews because <clears throat> everything matters about how you are reviewed. And the reason that we have been so successful is because Eden overdoes it. Overdoing it is actually just doing it right, okay? Right. In this market, to succeed, it's based on a very robust rating service, okay? And so your ratings and your reviews are everything. So we've had um, Superhost status since the very first uh, three months, after the three months, and we've maintained that, and the are way we, we've maintained that. Are we Airbnb plus two? We are Airbnb plus two, which is an additional higher level of service status, and uh, really it's based on the decor and design of the home. Probably and, price point as well. And the things that you provide. Everything must be like a hotel, but a luxurious hotel. And so we did get the plus status too, and uh, you know, that wasn't easy either. The super host status is um, of the utmost importance when I'm searching personally for a place to go anywhere. I'm first gonna look for a super host because I know I'm gonna get the consistent level of service and satisfaction. It's kind of like McDonald's, it's like any other chain. You know what to expect when you get in there. And so I'm always first and foremost gonna look for Superhost status. So Superhost is based on four things. Um, you know, very briefly, I'll tell you, it's about response rate to your guests who are inquiring. You must respond quickly within an hour. You must have 90% or better response rate. Your stars, so your reviews, you must maintain 80% or better must be five star reviews. And you must not cancel you can never cancel it's like a scarlet letter you you cannot can i think you're allowed one cancellation at this point in time i don't know i have never canceled on anybody you get what's called like a scarlet letter where it marks it on your profile this host has canceled 172 days prior to a guest so and it doesn't go away for a year so you go you find if you need to cancel things happen if you need to cancel you go find a friend who can host them but you got to get them to go find another property you got to help them find another property so why was this a good business model um i think a lot of people want to know that it's not a ton of work and i'm and i say that you know what i mean it, she says it carefully around me carefully because i've got check-ins check-outs I am personally involved in every single check-in and check-out. I don't have a company handle it. I don't have anybody else do it. Could we? I, we could, we could. I think when we scaled. I'm not sure where that level of real attention to detail and that customer service that I'll, only I know when I'm giving it and I know I'm gonna get a five-star review from this person because I know that I'm gonna go the extra mile. And as long as I am 
letting them know that I hear them and that I'm attending to it. it doesn't have to be perfect, but at least they need to know I hear them and I'm working on it. You know, but ultimately, is it a ton of work at a few Airbnbs? No, it's manageable. And it's, and I hold another job or two or three or four. You know, we talked about some mistakes that we made and really with this Airbnb, I don't think there was any mistakes besides design flaws. Which we have one, um, which we've switched over to. We do not have a uh, direct TV or a Cox TV because God, I actually had that idea when we were first buying it to not get TV. Do you yeah, that? I don't think I don't think it was like cool then. Okay, people didn't stream back it's then. Six people months did, later, they did having that type of TV service. It really was disastrous for us in the New Orleans market due to weather, rain, storms. It was going down all the time. We got our TV zapped one time from a get circuit breaker. It, yeah, so. so get a battery. If you do have an Airbnb and you have Wi-Fi, my first recommendation, probably one of the biggest things. It's a look, big tip, big tip right here. Yeah, big tip would be to get a battery backup for your server, which means that when your power does go out, if it ever goes out, it's going to not generate a new static IP. IP address or not generate a new IP address, which is gonna throw all your Wi-Fi off, which is gonna then have to have you get someone to come out there. And we had that happen quite a few times. Basically, it's not gonna wreak havoc with your technology if you get this small backup server. Something that we did and that I highly recommend and suggest is when you do have an error, you do have a problem, something does break down, the TVs do go out on the day of the big game. Whatever it is, things happen. It's gonna happen. Well, what I always do is I overcompensate for the error and it leaves people feeling really good. Like they know stuff happens. We had um, the TVs went out one time throughout the whole house early on. They were there for Jazz Fest. It wasn't major for them, but it was something for them. And I just scrambled around and we found um, an in-home chef. We had someone, a chef, a, a beautiful chef come in and prepare an awesome served breakfast for them. It left them feeling like these people care and they they were glowing about it and they were actually hoping, you know, that next time they came back, the TVs didn't work and they got another breakfast. That's how they felt yeah, about it. Right, right. Things that I feel like are, are the most important for you to get five star reviews and for you to become a super host. So, number one is I always like to have luxury bath products, um, luxury shower, um, shampoo, conditioner, you know, better products than, the, than someone would have at home. So, you feel like you're at a five star resort. Number two um, that's very important is you want to have really comfortable mattresses, great sheets and bedding so that when people come they remember wow that was those beds are super comfortable. I also like to have nice coffee bar, a coffee tea bar. I always have good coffees, teas, creamers, um, you know, things that they might not have at home or at least a little bit of the creature comforts of home. Number four, like I said, that's super important is that this place is like sparkling clean. I mean, one little rogue hair in the bed and you know, it just, it, resonates with people so yeah we've got an um, it's us right right and nobody likes a piece of one nobody likes hair a hair that's not theirs that's, found anywhere we've got an amazing cleaning crew that know the ins and outs of our homes and we hold them to very high standards period filtered water we've got purified water on it's yeah, just common sense stuff you know um don't leave a bunch of crap in your refrigerator throw out stuff that's not necessary have high speed internet you know, our New Orleans houses, every time we go there, we feel like we're at home. We feel totally relaxed. We love our neighborhood. I don't think we'll ever get rid of it, but nothing's forever uh, with real estate, oh. with real estate, with real estate, with real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Eden has built such a loyal following of people who love our house, who are in love with Shabelle. And that would be another tip that I would give is give your house a name and give it a story. We refer to our house as Shabelle, which also Eden failed to mention, she put a lot of heart and soul of what the local vibe is in there. Like when you walk into our house, you're gonna see all sorts of New Orleans sayings like, Lazy Le Bon. Lazy Le Bon. Centrally. <laughs> Fai do do and. Fai do do, what does that mean? Let's dance while the children Sing. sleep. <laughs> sleep. <laughs> <laughs> On the custom cabinets we did, we had a fleur de lis put into those. So when you walk into this house, you think, man, everything's been thought of. Now, I will tell you that 
Mistakes that you can make as an Airbnb host are the following. Inaccessible is probably the worst thing that you could be as an Airbnb host. Because if I want to get into the house and I can't even get into the house because I can't reach you, big problem. Responsiveness so, is, yeah. is the most important. But a lot of times people, you know, they don't get out much and these new technology locks are a little bit intimidating to them and they might just have a hard time no matter how much instructions you provided them. And so that might just blow their stay right away and stress them out. So you want to be approachable. You want to have a book together with them. And I can tell you that don't buy the cheap crap because people know it's cheap. We went to one house that was absolutely gorgeous in Kansas City. We stayed there, had a great time. The guy did almost everything perfect, I would say, but he put all this cheap 99 cent uh, shampoo in there, which I thought was a great idea. But <laughs> my wife my wife quickly pointed out that most females are not going to. Well, we paid $400 a night yeah, for we that paid, place. Uh, Is that what you expect? Eh. You know, you know, everybody's got their levels of whatever. I was just happy that we got shampoo, to be honest with you, because we've been to other ones where they don't include shampoo. The other thing that you wanna make sure that you do is leave a list of instructions of things that they can use, like their internet, okay? Like local restaurant guides that you have, questions that they might have. But don't leave a list of chores for these people to do. We have stated- I hate the chores list. Ugh. I hate that I have to take out my own trash and I need to put the laundry into the uh, washing machine. Don't forget to wipe down the fridge. You want me to start the dishwasher? like. That's not okay, in my opinion. However, a lot of hosts require it. I don't. You're on vacation. You don't have to do anything. I don't want you to strip the linens. I don't want you to have to work for your vacation. If you're going to try to get the top dollar, you need to be treated like you're staying in a five-star resort. We have stayed in some really crappy hosts. So I think the fact that both me and my wife have customer service backgrounds probably separates us from understanding what it takes to get a tip these days where most people just expect it. If you're gonna be a host, which is that's what it's called, a host, a host doesn't ask their guest to do stuff. A host makes their guest have an amazing experience that they're gonna rave about. And the only thing that we ask our guests to do is to give us a five-star review and to leave detailed feedback about what they specifically liked. And if there's anything that they wanted us to address, please do it offline so that we can deal with it. And Eden's been able to build a relationship with people, and I think we have had 100% five-star reviews. We have, yes. Okay, accessibility and being able to reach somebody when you get there and your code's not working. Right. You can't find it, it's dark. Where do I go, the back door, the right. front door, okay? One of the things that I am very aware of always is on check-in, Day, I know who's checking in and what time they're checking in, right. okay? And I'm around and I'm by my phone and I'm accessible. I always send them a message later on that day saying, just checking in on you, I just wanna make sure you have everything you need, please let me know. And then they'll send me that, uh, where is the remote for the fan? And you know what I mean? And it opens a little line of communication so that they don't have to feel ashamed to ask a more important right, question. Right. So like your that, toilet doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> something big, right. you know what I mean? You just wanna, You. some people don't wanna bother you. Some people feel like it's bothering, others don't. All right, so when do we start to grow our business and how many properties do we currently have now? I have several Airbnbs that I have with partnerships and then my Myself and my wife, we have several that we own together, okay? So that's a two-part question. Uh, New Orleans in general went crazy on Airbnbs. I was very, very cautious as I normally am, and my wife was gung-ho, like, what are you doing? Let's get into it, let's get more Airbnbs. And I just was too conservative, I feel like. And so we kind of missed the boat on getting more, right? And then what I thought and feared was gonna happen did happen, which is the city clamped down on some of the ordinances. So we didn't scale in that market, so we started to look at other markets. A good exit strategy always is important in real estate. And so I bought a house that I was going to flip into Kansas City. I bought it on the absolute busiest street in Kansas City, which is Southwest Traffic Way. So it's a freeway, a major arterial, and I bought the house on the corner of there and the stoplight in a really good neighborhood, but I bought it on the ass end of the neighborhood. W would you agree, baby? Yeah, you like to refer to it as that. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> the first thing that we did, it really was hard to price it because we're in the middle of COVID, right, at this point in time. You know, we're looking at other rentals like that and we priced it, I think, at $250 a night based on, you know, the mortgage, based on what we thought was comfortable. And then as a trial, 
We thought we were gonna be gone. We ended up renting it out while we were still in town for 250 nights, dollars a night, and then it ended up renting a hotel for about the same and letting those people stay there. And we found out the cleaner that we had sucked. They wouldn't left all the trash out. So right when we got back after coming there, we had to go and clean our house from the cleaners that did it. So we fired those cleaners. And then we figured out, you know what? Even for all this, it ain't even worth it for 250. It ain't worth it. We raised the rent by double and we booked it out just the same. And once we started booking it out, people just kept coming and coming. More important, they always say location, location, location. And so in my opinion, I was like, I don't know how this is gonna fly. We are on the busiest intersection in Midtown Kansas City. So we put a gate and what the market was missing in our travels, we realized was pet friendly places, okay? And I highly, highly recommend, I say that's a huge, huge, huge tip and bonus that will separate you from 95 other properties out of 100 if you are pet friendly and you will welcome the furry friends because they are family and people are traveling with their animals. So we fully gated the house and even though it was on a busy street, doggy is safe and we allowed pets and we just started getting bookings left and right. And it was like, kind of like, I didn't want to have this many bookings. Yeah. So we raised the, per we had it at 400, then I raised it to 500. I raised it to 600 at one point. I still kept getting inquiries. So the, the moral of the story is, if you have a good home, if you have a good product, if you have good customer service, and I got five star reviews from every single person, family group that has stayed there, they have overlooked completely that they are on a major, only one person mentioned it to me even. Everybody else, it was like they didn't even notice it. Right, the main takeaway from getting into the Airbnb business is like, as my wife said, if you've got a bedroom and you're a beginning investor, this was what this platform was designed for. Just get started subsidizing your mortgage, your rent, your whatever, and start renting your stuff out. Understand what customer service is. Be good at customer service. Be good at asking people to write your review. Even with bad customer service, I found that even good hosts will ask for a five-star review, right? We found that to be true. Now, I will tell you, we're in the process of actually building two houses right now, which are probably, as we're looking at them, we're also saying, hey, we're going to Airbnb these out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so we already know like, hey, listen, if this house is getting five to $600 and we have something way better, we can at least double that, right? That's at least gonna get double that. You're gonna see like in all of these different markets, one thing that you need to pay attention to just before we get out of this segment is subscribing <laughs> because we haven't said that yet. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you comment below, make sure you share it with a friend and make sure you get started in Airbnb, okay? It's just the smart thing to do. If you don't do it, you're not smart, I'm kidding. But uh, just mess with <laughs> It's just the smart thing to do is get involved in investing. Get If you have a house and you wanna get it rented out and you wanna rent out a room, you could do it. Like we just had one of our uh, buddies stay here, one of the guys that works for us, he rented out an Airbnb in someone's apartment complex. So it definitely will help you subsidize whatever you're doing. If your goals are bigger and better in the future, this would allow you to buy a house that you may not be able to afford. Short-term rental allows you to do so many different things. The only thing that I would caution you for is be aware of changing city regulations. But don't hesitate to get started in, in Airbnb. The deal with Airbnb is it's a great way, if you're looking for a second home, if you have a family and you're looking for a place to vacation, Airbnb, VRBO, short-term rental, whatever you wanna do, it's a great way to get started. You and your spouse can participate in it together and have a great time. Don't you agree? Yes, dear. Okay, thanks. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us on our Airbnb segment and uh, stay tuned. Hit the notification, like, subscribe, and- What yep. about sharing? Sharing's caring. Sharing is caring, and we have more side hustles to come.